I'm doing no shave November as you know and I've shaved off my hair and my beard and I would not shave my beard or cut my hair for a month and just let it grow uninterrupted. But I'm doing this in solidarity with people who have had their hair removed involuntarily. They also go through chemotherapy and people who are forcibly conscripted to join armed forces and of course people uh, in prisons, especially trans women in Malaysia who are sent to prison for being themselves. And I also want to see how much I can grow in a month. Also because I'm balding a bit in the front. So apparently my barber said that it would be harder for the hair to drop if it's like really short. I have no idea if this is true or not. But it's still worth a try. So the last time I shaved was when I was a baby. When my parents shaved my head according to culture. But the last time I, I've had cropped hair... So anything remotely close to having my head shaved was when I had just left home, some months after that rather. It happened when I finally accepted and realized my independence to discover who I was without any interference. How it happened was when well, I had waist long hair, someone just dared me to shave it all off. And then I realized that I actually could, that I didn't have to ask anybody's permission to do that. I shaved it all off, but the hairdresser, she refused to shave my head like using the blade, so um, she just gave me a really thin crop. But yeah, now I've shaved it. This is also an exercise in removing ego, because I've always been proud of my facial hair and my hair. After doing this, it was hard to look at myself in the mirror. You know, before surgery, I used to avoid looking down, because, you know, then I'd see my chest and all of that but after shaving i prefer to look down than to look at my face because it doesn't look like me in fact i still have some difficulty accepting how i look right now it really is an exercise for me to learn to accept myself in every form and not just when i have a beard and all that and you know to not tie my self-worth to how i look and also I've realized, it's my personal feeling that a lot of people tend to objectify trans men. So we went from obscurity to this sudden, we, we are suddenly highlighted and most of the time we are being objectified. So people always focus on how we look. Uh, you know, they always say, you know, this trans man, this trans man is like really hot. And look at his muscles, look at his abs. And so I, I feel like society right now is tying our self-worth to how good we look or how fit we are and not enough diversity is out there on trans men bodies and not all of us you know have six packs and abs and you know straight you know straight bodies and most of us still have our curves most of us are big guys and i feel like the fact that we were socialized as female had a lot to do have a lot to do with our current objectification. I know it feels good to be praised for looking good as we truly are, but we should not subscribe to this. This, you know, we are not all about our looks or pecs or abs, you know, we are more than that. We are people with emotions, with feelings, with hopes and dreams, and we've all experienced successes and failures like everyone else. That's how we should be looked at holistically. And that's not to say that you cannot praise a trans man for looking good. I, I think you should. But we should talk about more than that. We are more than that. I've mentioned top surgery just now. I have done uh, my top surgery with Dr. Pichat from Bangkok Plastic Surgery. I did a double incision because I started out quite big. I went from a big C, small D to a flat chest. <laughs> In order to be able to afford the top surgery, I did a fundraiser and I also took a loan. So this helped to finance my top surgery. So I did my surgery on the 2nd of September 2014. A month before that, I quit smoking cold turkey from 1st of August 2014 because I really wanted the surgery to go well. So I stopped smoking. After I got my date, I started planning with my friends and my partner on going there. He doesn't use a hospital. He has his own surgical room and all the equipments and 
medication whatever he has it all in house it made the cost probably cheaper i paid 3300 usd for a top surgery as well as liposuction for the side i went there with my with two of my friends and my partner their companionship meant a lot to me i don't know how i would have done it without my partner and without my friends because my partner helped to do everything for me i couldn't do anything and my friends really helped to cheer me up keep me focused on on how things will look and how things will be and then i'll have to deal with the pain just a little bit more when we got to bangkok dr pichat provided us with a fan it was very vvip treatment it was very good so we met the doctor and the staff the staff were very nice and professional and so was the doctor he looked a bit rushed but that's because he like has a lot of surgeries to do he didn't like us taking pictures and videos and frequently told us not to we didn't actually listen <laughs> we frequently took pictures and videos i mean it's my big moment right so after we met and he oh and he records your conversation with him we sat down in this conference room so i asked him a few questions what coffee oh yeah they served us coffee and tea and they were really 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 nice and i had to sign some documents and they told me to fast from midnight so on the day itself which was the 2nd of september i had to go to the clinic in the morning around 9 o'clock so there were a bit more formalities like signing papers and and then i was told to like go take a bath and they took a lot of pictures of my chest and then the doctor started drawing the lines on my chest you know of where he would cut it it looked really complicated so and like to this point i still it still hasn't sunk into my head that i was going to get surgery i mean it had happened so fast from the time which i did my fundraiser to actually getting it done it went by so fast i guess it just didn't sink in and i mean i was very relaxed going in it wasn't until after the doctor drew the lines and then when the nurse told me to lie down on the bed and they will wheel me in shortly that's when it struck me like shit i'm actually going for top surgery thankfully though i didn't have time to like freak out or whatever because i was wheeled into the surgery room uh, pretty quickly so that's around 12:15 in the afternoon of course i don't know what happened after they put the mask on and when i finally gained uh, consciousness again i had tears streaming down my eyes for some reason and apparently i kept mumbling pain pain my partner demanded them to administer the rest of the morphine which i think they didn't really want to because in case they would, it would affect me or something but i think the pain was a bit too intense after they administered the morphine i slept for 2 hours and i woke up feeling a lot better there wasn't much pain and i insisted on on walking around like at the first try i fell a bit i was i was feeling a bit weak but I got up after that and I was walking around just fine and apparently the surgery was done within 1 and 1/2 hours which is like really fast after I was walking around and stuff then they finally showed me the chili bag which is basically a bag of my fats and it looked like it looked like chili a lot of red like blood and some yellow and we called it the chili bag and it was 300 cc's and that's apparently from the liposuction so um i had to pose with that and they took a picture so after a while of walking around and sitting down i was encouraged by the hospital staff to stay in the hotel cuz i was mobile i could walk around i wasn't in that much pain and my hotel wasn't really that far away from the hospital which causes a bit of trouble later on because this place is quite far away from the city center it was really expensive for us to travel to the city center to look at all the uh, attractions but it was fine i think it was better that the hotel was so near to the hospital for me um because only one person can stay with me at any given time so i felt like it was Uh, better for me to go to the hotel like so that i can be with my friends and mobility was a bit hard with the drains it was difficult to do anything uh, getting up lying down i needed my partner and a friend to like help support my back as i was like trying to lie down i needed them to help me get up i needed my partner's help to like go to the toilet 
to do anything. It was it was hard for a while because I didn't really want to go out. My friends and my partner went out, but they always made sure that somebody was there to like keep an eye out uh, on me. They really helped and they were really excited for me, and that kept me in really good spirits. So on the sixth of September, uh, four days after the surgery, they took out the drains. Uh, and the bandages, so I saw my chest for the first time. That was an incredible feeling to see my chest so flat for the first time. And then uh, came the time to take out the drains, which sucked because it was really painful. For some reason, the doctor had put the drains in my armpits. They didn't shave the armpits, and it was really bad pain. And of course, I could I couldn't see the hole, so. It was really hard to uh, clean after that. So there was some cake blood and stuff that I couldn't get to. But I really had to wash, I think, the day after. And I did with soap. And I really hoped that the, that the hole had closed by then. So yes, I felt a lot better without the bandages and the drain. So the doctor told me to wear a compression vest 24-7 uh, for two weeks. And when I'm sleeping for a month. So the compression vest is basically this Velcro strip that people use to make the stomachs look flatter. So I guess you can get that anywhere. It was very irritating and painful to wear. It was itchy. It pressed on my armpits where the drains were. It was really painful. I hated it. At some point, I just took it off and just lay down in my bed for I think about five hours and didn't put it on. Even though I was supposed to wear it 24-7. But I just couldn't do it. My chest is flat now. I'm not supposed to wear the binder. But believe me, it is good to wear the binder so pro tip use the compression vest on top of a t-shirt so wear a t-shirt first and then wear the binder so you avoid the itchiness and pain the nurses taught us what to do until the wounds healed so betadine bandages waterproof glasses and all that so i took out the stitches on the 9th before flying back partial stitches were removed from the nipples and soon after all of them came off by themselves and uh, it's pretty good, so I'll just show you my chest right now. So yeah, um, there's still some swelling on the right side, uh, this part. I can feel, I can feel most of, I can feel all of this. I can, I can feel this nipple really well. Although there's some weird swelling over here that's, I don't know if you can see it. But there's some weird swelling at the bottom there, which I don't really think is a big deal. Um, but yeah, this part is still pretty swollen. Um, and the feeling is starting to come back, but this part is still pretty numb. This part, all of it. And the nipple was numb, but I'm starting to feel some sensation. Um, and in general, from the sides, it's pretty flat. I mean, it looks. I mean, it looks like a, it looks like a male chest, a cisgender male chest. There's some um, there's some dog earring at the side here, but I don't think it's too bad. I think when I start working out, it'll be fine. So yeah, I'm quite satisfied with the results. Um, I might go for a minor revision to adjust the nipple placing because, um, like here is pretty far off, but here is much nearer. This one is off, but and and there's and in case the swelling doesn't go off, I might go for the revision to make it more flat and more balanced. But I will try working out first and see if that helps. I want to try my best not to go for surgery again. It feels amazing to have a flat chest. I can go out without hesitating. I can just put a t-shirt on without worrying that it's going to show. You know, I don't have top dysphoria anymore. It's exciting. I cannot wait for the rest of my life. I feel really excited to go to the gym. I can't wait. I never could before this because of my really bad top dysphoria. I, I could feel it bouncing even though and it's just really uncomfortable to work out in a binder. But I have to wait for at least three months so I can start working out in December. The chest hair is actually growing out in full force after surgery for some weird reason. But the weirdest part of top surgery is with the nipples. I freaked out when the skin peeled off for the first time and I had to deal with pink nipples. I still have to. I'm still getting used to it but the colour is coming back in slowly. I'll give it a year. If it doesn't come back in fully up to then, I will probably tattoo it in. I really really recommend him for bigger guys. I like the fact that he does double incision and not 
the input T. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. I will answer in the next video. See ya!